Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to be going up just a little north of Florida to Cumming, Georgia, where we find 11-year-old Carter Whalen. Carter, how are you doing this evening? Great. Hey, you're, I can see that you're in your garage. That's pretty cool. I see your quarter midget next to you. But tell me a little bit about that Camaro behind you. Yes, it's my brother's art Cam 68 Camaro RSSS. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Do you ever work on it? Uh, yes, we put we put some weld wheels on it. We we hung the fenders on it and uh -huh. the inner fenders out. We did some interior work on it. Okay, so where's your collector car at? I don't have one yet. You don't have one yet? Well, okay, you still got some time though. You still got a few years before you get your driver's license. All right, so let's get started. We know that you're a quarter midget racer. And, but when did you actually start racing? At what age? My first full season was in 2017. I was six years old. 2017, six years old. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. And so um, in the quarter midget arena, we'll call it, there could be several different types of quarter midgets that you race. So tell the viewing audience a little bit about what you're actively driving right now. The classes that I'm running right now is Heavy Honda and Heavy 160. Heavy Honda, Heavy 160. Did you not experiment in another class a little bit towards the end of last year? Yes, when we went to Huntsville, I had the opportunity to run a Mod World Formula. How was that? It was really fun. Was it fast? Yeah, it's the Mod is the fastest quarter midget class. The fastest quarter midget class class. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, even though you may not be racing that all the time, what is your favorite class to race in? The Mod World Formula. The Mod World Formula. Do you see yourself running maybe some of those, more of those races maybe this year? Uh, hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, I know you've got a bunch of wins. What is your biggest win to date so far? When last year, when I won the Metro Dixie shootout at Metro Atlanta Quarter Midget Association in Senior Honda. In Senior Honda. All right, so that was, uh, what made that race such a special race for you? It was a Dixie shootout, and there were a lot of fast kids, a lot of national champions there, and it's just a great feeling when you know you've beaten all of them. Right, so... What did you do to celebrate? Did you do a major burnout? Did you toss the checkered flag? What was your What was your victory lap look like? Well, I just did a standard victory lap. Actually, no, I turned the car around and did an Alan Kowicki victory lap. An Alan Kowicki. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Now I like you even more because I like the fact that these young racers know history of our sport. And that, that Alan Kowicki lap is super famous. I think he probably did the coolest victory laps of anybody ever in the history of racing. So that's cool that you paid tribute to that. Always remember the guys that, that came before you that made the sport so great that we're in today. So now I'm going to ask you, what was your most embarrassing moment at the track? I was trying to do the Alan Kowicki victory lap again. And I drove it onto the rumble strips and into the grass. Into the grass? Did you did you spin out? Did you get stuck? Or you just kind of look off course just a little bit? No, I stalled the car. You stalled the car. Now, I, I got I to gotta pick on you a little bit because I'm thinking that the Alan Kowicki victory laps, those were always right up against the wall. How did you end up down in the grass? Well, the turns at some of the tracks are tight, so I swung it wide and turned it. And the don't have that much of a steering turn so it just hit the rumble strip and it picked the front tires up and drove into the grass drove into the grass now i've heard some really cool stuff about you know victory laps and quarter midgets i had one young man that told me that he was doing the victory lap holding the flag and the flag flew over his helmet he couldn't see where he was going and he hit the wall so yours doesn't seem to be so bad um now let's talk about i know you've raced literally all over the country in your quarter midget do you have a favorite track that you like? I have multiple favorite tracks. Okay. Tell me what they are. 
um, Huntsville Quarter Midget Association in Huntsville, Alabama, Metro Atlanta Quarter Midget Association up north in, is that north? In Brazelton in North Georgia Quarter Midget Association, which is three minutes away from here. Okay, so let me ask you a question because I don't know the answer to this. Have you ever run the Brickyard? Yes, we've run it two times. Two times? So did you get out on the actual Indianapolis 500 track and get to make a lap? Yes. How cool is that? It's really cool. Now, well, doing it in the 160 car. That yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, I'm an old dude, but I'd love to do that. I don't think I could fit in your quarter midget. Maybe your brother could let me borrow his Camaro or something when he gets that thing running. But I would have to think that turning a lap at the Indianapolis 500 would be like a highlight. I don't care how old you get. I, I doubt if you ever will forget that moment. So I, I do have one question about that. When they when they kind of turned you guys loose, did they tell you kind of like not to race? But did you were you in there going, oh my gosh, I just like to go past the guys that are in front of me and girls? Uh, they told us we could not drive past the pace car, and if we did, the director of one of the directors of USAC would have a talk with us, so we had to stay behind that and go at like half throttle. At half throttle. So did you get up like right behind the pace car though? No, because they do it in name order. Okay. In order. So I was in the fifth row, I think. So okay. I couldn't get all the way up there. You couldn't get all the way up there. All right. So let me ask you a question. We know what your favorite track is. Um, who is your all-time favorite driver? Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott. He's very nice. I've met him a few times and talked to him. So I guess you were a pretty happy camper at the at the end of the year when Chase won the championship? Yes. Yeah. So you know that Chase went down and raced at the Snowball Derby in a, in a late model the next weekend. Um, so it goes to show you, you could win a NASCAR championship, but sometimes these late model drivers that you've never heard of before in your life, they're pretty awesome race car drivers. He also ran the Chili Bowl and other midget races in Millbridge. Yeah, you know what? I really was impressed with what Chase did at, at the Chili Bowl because that's a tough place to race right there. I mean, I think there was over 307 cars there, and it was the best of the best. So uh, I, I just think it was impressive that he even went down there and actually attempted that. That says a lot about him. Because what he does is that's giving back to the sport. That's giving back to the grassroots of racing. And we need more of these NASCAR drivers. So if you're a NASCAR driver out there and you're watching, you need to do more things like Chase Elliott. Actually, Kyle Busch was at that race as well and Noah Grayson. So they're all kind of coming back and, and kind of supporting grassroots where they came from. So let's, right. let's move away from racing a little bit. Do you have another favorite sport? Uh, there is no other sport besides racing. Oh, good answer. Good answer. Um, so let's talk about school right now. Are you, are you doing online school or are you doing physical school? I am going to physical school in person. All right. So did you do any online school last year or have you always been in the classroom? Uh, at the end of last year, we finished the year off virtual school. Virtual school. Which one do you like the best? In person. In person, good answer. Gosh, you're just hitting them all tonight. What's your favorite subject in school? I like history and social studies. History and social studies, cool. So what's your favorite moment in history? Do you have a, like a, like you got a favorite driver? Do you have a favorite person like from, from the past in history that you just really, really are interested in as far as what they did? Well, I'm interested in World War II and a lot of things like that. Okay, cool, cool. I always thought it would be really cool if I could go back in history and meet like Benjamin Franklin or something. Because you think about all the things that these guys invented and it's just, uh, you know, could you imagine ben Benjamin Franklin being, you know, or Alexander Bell being in with us today and looking at all the smartphones and the internet and all this stuff and think that, those are the guys that actually started. So 
Um, I think history is a cool deal. Um, what is your least favorite subject? Science. Science. Okay, so see, that was my favorite subject in school was science and math. And I was really, really bad in English. English, I was like, I was not good at all. So let's talk about a lot of drivers have nicknames. So I think of like Tony Stewart, I think of Smoke and, you know, um, like Jesse Love, one of your, your fellow teammates, he has a nickname, he's called a hammer. So do you have a nickname? Um, some people call me the wheel man, which is one of my nicknames. So the wheel man. So tell us a little bit about how you got that nickname. Um, up south where I'm from, I'm, I'm known for in heat races and some mains coming from like seventh to ending up winning them. Well, that takes a wheel man to be able to come from the back to the front. You know, you may want to, we may have to work on your nickname a little, to get something like really cool because... You know, you have another teammate, you know, Anthony Alfredo. Do you ever follow Anthony? He's called Fast Pasta. And it was actually NBC that gave him that name. So we may have to come up with something a little bit later in the season that'd be maybe, maybe something a little different than Wheel Man. All right. So when you're not racing, Carter, what do you like to do? I like to play with my RC cars and help my dad in the shop. What kind of RC car do you have? I have a Traxxas Max, a Traxxas Slash 4x4 Ultimate, a Traxxas Drag Slash, which is really cool, an Axial Mini SCX24, a lot of RC. I started to say, you've got a lot of RC cars. So if I come to come in Georgia, you're going to let me play with one of them? Maybe. Maybe? So let me ask you another question. What do your friends at school think about you being a race car driver? Some think it's cool. Some just don't understand it and don't get it. They don't understand it? Well, maybe you should take your race car to school one day. That'd be a little challenging. <laughs> Might be a little challenging. Well, you could do some burnouts out in the front. Just stay out of grass. <laughs> okay. Um, so every driver has an ultimate goal in racing. What is your ultimate goal? Win championships at a cup level. Win championships at a cup level. You said championships. You didn't say championship. You want to win, win multiple ones, right? Yes, sir. All right. That's pretty cool. Well, we're just about out of time for tonight. So I'm going to ask you, do you want to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? Little Speed Shop, David Medina Photography, Conquest Strategic Marketing, Ace Custom Audio, and Mark Tuggalardi. Well, there you got it. A young race car driver from Cumming, Georgia. That's Carter Whalen. And he's a quarter midget racer. I think he's probably going to be moving up the ladder pretty quick here. So if you've not followed Carter, do so by visiting CarterWhalenRacing.com. Make sure to go into his fan zone. Sign up for his digital newsletter. Make sure to follow him on his Facebook and his Twitter and his Instagram pages. And Carter, I want to thank you again for being with us tonight. All of you viewers, thank you for tuning in. And we'll be back in two weeks with another Race Face Spotlight interview. Good night, everyone. Bye.